What do we got here? This is my copy of Sanson's Pocket Atlas from 1700. So you, someone's got some really, really big pockets? <laughs> I bought this atlas uh, on an online auction. I paid about 7,500 for this atlas, and it's really not something I can display. I was always afraid of putting it out on the coffee table and having one of my friends put a drink on top of it, so it just kind of sits on the shelf collecting dust. Uh, this is absolutely great. So you said there's a date on this from 1700? Yes, that's the date it was printed. Do you know why atlases are called atlases? No. Way back in the day, one of the guys who wrote one of the first great books of maps and everything, mm -hmm. He put the god Atlas on the front of it, mm. on the cover, holding up, you know, the universe. And it's stuck. <laughs> and it's stuck. So that's where the word whole Atlas thing came from. Sure. So does it have the island of California in it? It does have the island of California. It's actually one of the first maps that are in there. Uh, okay. It's actually broken out by continent. Um, so it is written in French. One of the reasons I'm looking to sell it. Didn't know it was in French before I bought it. Just about everything would be written in French or Latin, mm -hmm. because if you were educated, you knew those languages. The cool thing here is it tells you about a particular place and then shows a map of it. Mm -hmm. And it was much more expensive when you bought maps that were colorized. Mm -hmm. And um, They've actually done a lot of the capitals with little gold dots. Uh, I noticed that in some, a lot of the European ones. Yeah. Now, was this thing in a flood or something? I'm assuming it traveled around the world, so uh, it probably got a little weathered uh, during uh, that I process. didn't get weathered, it got wet. Yeah. OK, there, there's, a, there, there's a difference, um, especially when you're dealing with maps. Um, didn't seem to have affected any of the pictures. OK, they're all well, still. Well, it's affected these. These are, you know, th this has water damage. It definitely affects the value. Um, and you can see some of the bleed through from the ink. Um, See how this yellow has gone over here? Mm -hmm. It affects the value of the book. Um, sure. Matter of fact, it still feels moist a little bit. Um, see this mold? Mm -hmm. It will spread. Yeah. It has to be abated. So. I don't know how it's sitting on a sitting on a shelf in the box. Um, how much do you want for it? I'm asking for twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Um, actually, it sounds a little high. I, I'll be honest with you. I mean. Um, let me have someone take a look at this. I have a friend who is like the smartest book person in the world, sort of. Cool. I mean, she's written books about books. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I might read one of her books about books. All right, so I'm going to give her a call, get her down here, and um, she'll help us figure it out. Awesome. All right. So I'm really excited to have the expert look at my book today. And if I do sell it, I'd love to hear more about it before I part with it. A guy brought in a atlas published in 1700. There's a lot of damage to this book, so I've called in Rebecca to see if it's even worth dealing with, considering the state it's in. The woman who writes books about Hi. books, and here's a book about maps. <laughs> OK. Is this a book for a traveler? Or? The person who's buying this book, they're not expecting him to travel around the world and see all these places. Mm -hmm. In some ways, it's meant for entertainment, but in other ways, it's meant for status. You have the atlas that is the terrestrial or the like Earth sphere, right. and then you have the mapping of the the heavens, the skies, the celestial sphere. So it's a book within a book. It's like a bonus book. I am noticing as I go through this definite signs of mold. And actually, if it were just on the pages, I wouldn't have that much of a problem. But I'm really concerned about how much the color, the thing that is the real big selling point for this, is affected by the damp staining. Sure. So I mean, after you take all the facts in here and like put it in, into the book calculator, See where you end up. What number do you come up with? Well, the big question mark of how thorough is the mold damage, um, and how much can be saved? Because when you're talking about hand coloring, that adds an additional element of complexity to cleaning up damage. Maybe twelve thousand. So to get this rebound and do all the remediation, a minimum of two thousand, maybe. Two thousand does not strike me as absurd. Okay, you're the best. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I think that this book has a lot of problems and probably more problems than it's worth. It's a beautiful book, but it's a gamble. So what do you want for it now? Well, based on what she just said, $8,000. I'd give you $5,500 for it. I'm gonna, I'm, I, I'm, at a minimum, I'm gonna be spending $2,000, right. OK? I'm at eight. I'm at 5,500. 5, you know, normally I would negotiate with you, but this is like straight up gambling. Okay? okay, I'm literally taking my money and throwing it on a blackjack table. It's tied up money for a long time. All those other things, and uh, 
Why don't you do six? I I'll feel go 5,500 bucks because like normally there's always variables in risk in business. There's more here, okay? And anything more than 5,500, I'm just not comfortable because I'm sort of buying a pig and a poke. Um, I'll sell it to you for 5,500. I think we got a deal. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank I'll you. meet you right over there and uh, we'll do some paperwork. Cool. At this point, I think it's time that I just cut my losses and sell it and hopefully they can give it a better home than I did. Mr. Brown and I got along famously. <laughs> Why he tittled through a pass? I caught the ball myself. It's got a name engraved on it. How did you end up with this? Sounds so fun.